Well, what's next here? Um, and why? Why would is this important? Again, if you're channeling your inner twelve-year-old, then there's no there's the answer is why not? Why not make it bigger? Why not continue? But um, at some point, you might just kind of get overwhelmed by it. Uh, hopefully, you've gotten overwhelmed a few times already, and then struggled on. Um, there, but there really actually is a very interesting, uh, some very interesting punchlines to come out of this, and some real reasons why we would actually create these incredibly fast-growing functions. And they they come down to the very roots um, of mathematics and what can or cannot be proven in mathematics. And I'll try to give you um, steer that steer it in that direction pretty soon. But we do actually need to create some somewhat bigger functions first. Um, amazingly enough, even these tremendously huge functions are not quite big enough to uh, to get at some of the key issues of uh, the foundations of mathematics that this touches. Okay, so let's do let's just look at what would be the next obvious stage. Well, I've got f omega squared. I could look at f omega cubed or to the k power. Okay, well, what's omega to the k plus one? Oops of n, well, I'm supposed to think, how would I get omega to the k plus 1? That's omega to the k times omega. And so that's the limit of omega to the k times a bunch of numbers. And the rule is I just put in n. So I, for lack of something else better to do, I diagonalize and I put in n. Okay, So that's like omega cubed times 5 or something like that. Well, what the heck is that? f sub omega to the k. Well, what does it mean to multiply omega k times n? Oh, that was a limit too. It's omega k times n minus 1, but then plus another, well, it'd be plus omega, but that's really the limit of a bunch of n, so I put an n there. Okay. So what we get is this process where we take powers and they go to lower powers and they have multipliers and they have numbers, and so we can make sense of things like omega to uh, a power. And I'm going to give you, give you a very explicit example in a minute. And I'm not going to work it out live. I'll just show you how incredibly big it gets when you try to start expanding out these really, really big ones at all fully. Um, or not really fully, but even starting to. Um, then, But what's next after that? F omega squared, omega cubed, omega fourth, omega fifth, omega sixth. Well, you know what? There's something beyond that. It's F sub omega to the omega of n. Huh, well, what does it mean, omega to the omega? Okay, omega raised to the power omega, well, that's exactly just the limit of omega to the n. And if you can figure out omega to, or omega to the k, let's say, I was using k, whatever. If I can figure out how to deal with finite powers of omega, then I can just use this. I guess I need a k there. I can just use this to figure out what happens with omega to the omega. So um, that is going to be pretty powerful. So let me just show you. I have some pre-prepared stuff here. Here's a pretty. I'm actually going to put a two in here because uh, we'll see if you put a three in here, it just it gets pretty even hairier. What's f sub omega to the omega of two? Well, omega to the omega is the limit of omega to the one, two, three, four, and this just says, okay, just cut it off at two. Never mind all those other things. So f omega squared of two. Okay, what's omega squared? Well, it really means omega times omega. And so that's the limit of omega times 1, omega times 2, omega times 3, and we cut it off at 2, so f omega 2. Well, what's that? Omega times 2 is really omega plus omega. It's the limit of omega plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Oh, okay, so it just goes down to plus 2. So when this number is 2, we actually don't gain, as, as we've seen before, we don't gain a heck of a lot of power from this omega to the omega symbol. If this was 100, we sure would, okay, or if we do plus 1. But let's just expand this out to not to be ridiculous. Okay, finally, this is not a limit ordinal. This is something that really is just the successor of something. So we use the other rule. It's f omega plus 1 squared, so I just wrote that out. And this is not a limit ordinal, so that's f omega squared, so I wrote that out. Now I diagonalize again. That's f2 of 2. You know what? That's not actually a scary big number. I actually, just for fun, instead of writing this down just as 8, which we've already calculated, just went ahead and wrote it down. Okay, that's f1 of f1 of 2. And what is f1? That's f0 of f0 of 2. Finally, we're getting down to f0. That's the base function. So that's 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. OK, f1 of 4 is 
add one four times to four, that's eight. So that's really, really unpacking f2 of two here, which happens to be f omega of two. Okay, so that's eight. Now f omega of eight is f eight of eight, that's the diagonalization again. That's f seven done eight times. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna peel one of those f sevens off. Leave seven of them unevaluated for now. And I haven't even talked about this f omega plus one, which we know is scary big. Okay, f7 of eight is f6 repeated eight times. Okay, so what you're gonna get, you can see, you kinda see the pattern. You're gonna get f7 repeated seven times, f6 seven times, blah, 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 all the way down to f2 seven times, and then f1 eight times. Okay, well f1 is the doubling. So we're actually just gonna get, this is two to the three, doubled eight more times is two to the 11th. Okay, now we have to apply f2 seven times to that. Well, I'm gonna split one of them off Leave these guys unevaluated. F2 of 2 to the 11. Da 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 da. Whoa. Okay. So we're already we're getting moderately big numbers here, and we've built up a huge chain of stuff to put that into, and we haven't even unpacked, you know, the the core of it really. I mean, f omega plus one is going to make that super huge. Even if we sort of approximate all these guys with our relations to Knuth up arrows and and horizontal up arrows, pretty early, we can use the fact that we believe from the Wikipedia article um, that f omega plus 1 has to do with four chains with a 2, and then f8 of 8 is roughly 2 up 7, 8, and I put a plus 1 in here so, so it would actually be correct. And so it looks like taking a four chain with a 2 on the end and putting ginormous numbers in as the things in the four chain. And so that's just what we get when we put in a 2 into this f omega to the omega function. If we try f omega to the omega of 3, that's f omega cubed of 3. Now that expands out. I'm going to do this whole thing. You can just kind of glory in it if you want. f omega squared times 3, which expands as f omega squared times 2, plus another omega times 3. f omega squared times 2 plus omega times 2 plus 3. And then finally, that's not a limit ordinal. And then so that goes to the re repetition trick. And it nests and nests and nests. Every time we get a limit ordinal, I have to split one off. Here's f something squared and the same thing with one, and diagonalize. So it's uh, this sort of alternation between diagonalizing and stepping down and, and repetition. So the repetition trick and the diagonalization trick. You can see how big this is expanding out. And every single one of these functions is still an incredibly huge function. I put dot, dot, dots because it turns out there's a pattern here. And so what we've got is f of this really big ordinal squared, and then a bunch of double applications of f of these really big ordinals, and the ordinals go down sort of one by one by one by one by one. And at this point, I've got it down to f omega 2 cubed. Well, that's still a pretty big ordinal. okay? But that finally unpacks down to just the finite ones. And then I started actually pull it, putting them back in. Ah, oh my god. Okay. And what it happens here is I just wanted to show the pattern. Let's actually go back, go to here. If you look at these f squared with these big ordinals descending, and I stopped at f omega squared of 3. And I know that f omega squared is something we can express in terms of um, arrows. And so this 3, arrow 3, 3 means 3. 3, 3 with horizontal arrows. And then I put that into f omega squared. Okay, that's the thing that tells you to put that in the this slot, the number of arrows slot, and this slot. So remember, f omega squared means take this many, this number, and also put it in a chained arrow notation with this many, uh, th this many terms and this many minus 1 arrows, basically. Okay, so we've got now this huge number on both slots and that many horizontal Conway arrows between them. And then we put it into another omega squared. We get this thing. And then we do it again and again and again. And so we nest these guys this many times. This was this is definitely further than anything we even mentioned with the Conway notation. Because we're taking the idea of arbitrary numbers of horizontal arrows and we're nesting them, we're repeating that process over and over again, and we're doing it a number of times, which is described by a huge arrow notation, and we're not even close to done yet. In these dot, dot, dots, there's about like 10 different layers that I've suppressed here. And so then you say, okay, well, let's say z 
is this ridiculous number of times. And we take horizontal arrows, nested, nested, nested. And then you call that y. And you take that nested, nested, nested. And this is what I said when I wrote this to myself. It just gets ridiculous to the, after this. So f omega omega, even at this measly number 3, is it's hard to even express and think about how much further it goes than this ridiculous idea of taking horizontal arrows and nesting, 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 and using horizontal arrow calculations to describe the new number of horizontal arrows, and then repeating it. And, re and the number of repetitions is a huge number described by horizontal arrows. And it's almost effortless to write this stuff down. It's not effortless to unpack it, but it just takes a few symbols. And this encodes this incredible process of recursion and diagonalization. And it doesn't even stop there. And it can't stop there if we're actually going to make contact with um, a, a couple of really cool fundamental results from, uh, from proof theory. OK. So whew, what is the next step in ordinal arithmetic? Well, there's actually a very, very important next step in ordinal arithmetic. We've got omega to the omega. Uh, that's not control W, it's control GW. Okay. Well, I could take omega to the omega to the omega. This is back to the original Knuth up arrow idea. And I could take that to the omega. And I could take that to the omega. And I could do that an arbitrary number of times. And so I could look at the limit where this is done n times. Well, that actually is a very, very important number because it actually maxes out the idea of ordinal arithmetic. Because this is the these this is the biggest kind of operation we could do, exponentiation with ordinals that we know how to do, and then we're going to repeat that and nest it n times. And it turns out this gets a special name. This is called epsilon sub zero or epsilon naught. And that is going to be a really important way, uh, sort of uh, waypoint on our journey through ordinal arithmetic and our journey through the fast-growing hierarchy.